the secret to having your online business begin to get traction and start taking off has nothing to do with how many social media platforms you're on. It has nothing to do with the name you choose for your business, your color scheme, your logo, or any of those other unimportant things that entrepreneurs tend to spend way too much time on. It really all comes down to your niche, your business's one specific focus and who you are specifically helping. That is what we're talking about today. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Maureen from thecreativeimpact.com, where I help content creators of all types get off that free content hamster wheel by providing them with the templates and the trainings that they need to turn their knowledge into digital products so that they can finally start having their first four and five figure months without trading time for money in their business. If this sounds like you, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell right after it so you don't miss any of the videos I post on this channel each and every week. So if you are wondering, how do you niche down to stand out and make an income online? It all starts by understanding that trying to help everyone helps no one, you guys, <laughs> including it yourself, right? The idea of narrowing down, it really scares a lot of people, especially multi-passionate entrepreneurs. I get it. I am multi-passionate too. I have been there. But when you are building an online business, you really need to get very specific on who you're helping and what you're helping them with and stick with it. This is so important in 2022 and beyond. Most entrepreneurs, they start a platform, a blog or a YouTube channel, something like that. And they cover a ton of different topics that will appeal to a ton of different people. So maybe parenting and fitness and nutrition and travel and beauty and making money, saving money, or they, they pick one of these niches like parenting, but then they talk all about different topics within the parenting space that are not related. So maybe breastfeeding and toddler activity and homeschooling kids and traveling with kids and family organization. And I get the thinking, the more topics you include, the more people you appeal to, the more traffic you think you'll get and the bigger audience you think you'll attract. But in reality, it just confuses your reader. So let's take a homeschooling mom, for example, say they find a pin that you put on Pinterest about a homeschooling article and they click on it and they read it and it's helpful. And then they want to look on your blog for other homeschooling articles, but they're looking there and it's, it's giving them breastfeeding tips and toddler activities that they can do and their child's 10 and they're like, well, wait, I clicked on this for homeschooling. I want some more homeschooling information. I don't need information on breastfeeding or traveling with my family. And they're not going to see you as an expert in that specific area. They're just going to look at you like, okay, um, you're a jack of trade, like master of none, right? So this is what I want you to understand. If you're not speaking specifically to one pain point and you're, you're doing all different pain points, you're going to lose people very quickly. You're not going to get that quote unquote expert status that we want you to have with your platform. Because when you speak to everyone, you truly speak to no one. A lifestyle blog or generic food YouTube channel may have worked 10 years ago, but in 2022 and beyond to be profitable, you have to be very niche down. Not to mention speaking about all different topics is going, it's going to drain your energy and your motivation because you are trying to be all things to all people. You're trying to focus on all these different topics and that's exhausting. If this is you, let me know in the chat right now. Like there's no shame that I want you to figure this out. Maybe you're struggling to get traffic. Maybe no one is opting into your freebie. And I want to tell you the reason for this is likely that you're just trying to be a jack of all trades and a master of none, right? Again, when you speak to everyone, you speak to no one. You have to narrow down to get that expert status for people to take you seriously. So let's talk about what you should do. So first you want to be as specific as possible when choosing your niche. The more focused you are, the more effective you're going to be at explaining what you do and how you can help your ideal customer. This is key when you're creating digital products. So what is the one thing you want to be known for? What is your one focus? If it's easier, start with maybe who is the one person you want to serve? Who do you specifically want to help? And what is their biggest pain point that they need help solving? If you find that you are really struggling to figure this out, you, you might be getting stuck at indecision because you're just afraid that you're going to choose the wrong thing. So you just wait and you wait for this answer to magically come to you. 
But let me tell you, it will never come to you this way. You gain clarity by taking action, taking that messy action. Pick a specific topic or person that you want to speak to and just start. Tweak it from there. It's all about trial and error, testing, see what works, what doesn't, and then pivoting as necessary. This is how businesses are built. You will most likely pivot at some point as you figure out what works and what doesn't, what people are interested in and what they're not, what you enjoy talking about. But if you never take that initial action, you're never going to figure this out. So it all starts by taking action, imperfect action and tweaking as you go. So for example, when I first started this business, I started strictly helping people with WordPress tech and the back end of their sites. I was, I was managing people's WordPress accounts and solely answering some tech questions for small businesses and bloggers. But I quickly realized that after, you know, taking some messy action, this just didn't feel quite right. It felt more like a job. And what I really really found out I wanted to do was help those creators get off the free content hamster wheel that they were just putting out free content week after week. They didn't know how to make money with their platform. And that's crazy. That's not a business. So I wanted to teach these creators, these service providers, how to make more of an impact on on their audience and earn passive income by packaging their knowledge into digital products so that they could stop trading that all that time for money. So that is what I do now, but it took a lot of messy action to get it narrowed down to what I truly wanted. Let me give you now some examples to really hit home the idea of a broad versus a narrow niche. Okay. So let's start with weight loss. Like talk about broad, right? When someone comes to me saying that they help people with weight loss, but they're not getting much traffic to their site or or people opting into the freebie, I get straight to work with them on narrowing down their niche and who they're serving. So in working with them, they might say, okay, well, I want to help people lose weight with a vegan diet. And that's great. That's a start, but it's still way too broad. What type of people are we talking about? Then we might come up with focusing, okay, weight loss for women with a vegan diet, to which that's a good, good start too. But I, we, I want to get you more specific on the person. Like different ages have different metabolisms. They have different needs. So we might work down to something like helping postmenopausal women lose weight with a vegan diet. Boom. Now we are getting somewhere. This may seem way too specific to you, but I guarantee you it is not at all. This is where you need to be narrowing down to if you want to make money with your platform. You want to talk about who you specifically serve and how you can specifically help them. So let's take another topic here. Let's take parenting, which is extremely broad. And a lot of people try to just have this parenting blog, right? But parenting can be can be niched down so much more. So we could think parenting a child with special needs. Now that's much more specific, but there are all different types of special needs and every special need is going to have different needs. So if someone told me that, I'd say, well, what type of special need? And if they said parenting a child with autism, that's okay. That's even more now, but we have to narrow it down even more because what age range are we talking about? Someone who's parenting a toddler with autism will have very different needs than someone who's parenting a teen with autism. So then we might narrow it down to we're helping parents of preschoolers raise children with autism. Okay. So that's how we need to keep narrowing it down. Let's do another one. Let's talk about the traveling niche. So you can't just talk about travel in general, right? Like what type of travel are we talking about? Where? Who's traveling? Is it families? Is it college students? Is it seniors? We have to get much more specific. We could start by narrowing down by uh, location, like maybe traveling near Northern Europe. But then we have to say, okay, well, what is the person's income like? Are we talking about traveling and staying in bed and breakfast or fancy hotels? Are we talking about traveling and staying in hostels? So we could narrow it down even more to traveling Northern Europe on a budget. And that's a start. But then how old is our audience, right? A 20 something year old is going to likely want to do very different things than maybe a retired couple. So we could narrow it down to say something like traveling Northern Europe on a budget for women over 55. Now we're getting somewhere. Think of it like this, like if to explain this a little further, say you have a foot injury, right? Would you want to go to your primary care doctor who deals with fevers, rashes, asthma, ear infections, all the things, or would you want to go to someone who specializes in foot injuries, right? Like a podiatrist or whoever specializes that. I think it's podiatrist. That's what we need to look at, right? The same thing goes for people looking for information online. If you want to learn watercolor painting, are you likely to become a follower of a blog or YouTube channel that talks about 
watercolor painting techniques and tips a bit, maybe here or there. But they also talk about oil painting tips, acrylic painting tips, pottery, knitting, weaving, you know, and, and they have a freebie that you can sign up that talks about all different types of painting tips. Or would you want to follow someone that has a blog or YouTube channel all about just watercolor painting for beginners? They have a freebie related to beginner tools you need to start with watercoloring. They have weekly technique tips specifically for watercolor beginners. So who... When looking at these two comes across as more of an expert. Who would you likely be more likely to relate to, to opt into their freebie, to be on their email list and eventually buy from them, right? Probably the second, because they speak directly to you. So you need to think again about who you are speaking to, because it's pretty much impossible to build a profitable online business that serves everyone. Different people in different stages of life want very different things. So again, we have to think about what they're struggling with, what their biggest pain point is. This is where market research really becomes a non-negotiable. I tell all my students this, you need to ask, not guess what your ideal person's biggest pain point is. And once you have this figured out, you begin to flush out your offer, not what you're going to sell. I know that sounds confusing, but rather we're starting to flush out what the transformation they're looking for is. And we'd say that something like, I help who do what? Like, what are they struggling with so that they can blank? What's the transformation? So for me, again, it's I help content creators, the who, do what? Get off that free content hamster wheel by providing the templates and trains that they need to turn their knowledge into digital products so that what? So that they can start having their first four and five figure months without trading time for money in their business. That's the transformation. I am clear with what I do and the people watching this know whether it's for them or if it's not. I attract those who identify with me and my message and I repel those that don't. You are not for everyone. Not everyone is going to identify you or like you and that is okay. It's not personal at all. It's business. Okay, hopefully you now have a clearer idea of how to niche down, stand out, and make an income online. If you have wondered how to find your profitable niche, this is it in its most basic form. Like they say, the riches are truly in the niches. So if you want more help narrowing down your niche, grab my free narrow niche cheat sheet to get started. I will put a link in the show notes below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.